Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. This broadcast is brought to you on this station every Sunday at this time. Thank you for listening. Lord Jesus Christ, be present now. Our hearts in true devotion bow. Thy Spirit send with grace divine. And let thy truth within us shine. Unseal our lips to sing thy Our service now begins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O God, the source of all that is just and good, nourish in us every virtue and bring to completion every good intent that we may grow in grace and bring forth the fruit of good works. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and who reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Lutheran Radio Choir now sings hymn 239, Come, Thou Almighty King. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe in Jesus Christ, he gives the power to become the children of God and bestows on them his Holy Spirit. Glory be to God on high. Glory. Our first reading comes from the sixth chapter of Ephesians and will be the text for this morning's message. Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, 
but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand firm. Stand therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth and having put on the breastplate of righteousness and as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the spirit with all prayer and supplication. To that end, keep alert with all perseverance, making supplication for all the saints and also for me, that words may be given to me in opening my mouth boldly to proclaim the mystery of the gospel for which I am an ambassador in chains, that I may declare it boldly as I ought to speak. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel is recorded in the Gospel of St. Mark, the seventh chapter. Jesus called the people to him and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. And when he had entered the house and left the people, his disciples asked him about the parable. And he said to them, Then are you also without understanding? Do you not see that whatever goes into a person from outside cannot defile him, since it enters not into his heart, but his stomach, and is expelled? Thus he declared all foods clean. And he said, What comes out of a person is what defiles him. For from within, out of the heart of man, come evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All of these evil things come from within, and they defile a person. This is the gospel of the Lord. Let us together confess our holy Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. After the choir sings hymn 373, By Grace I'm Saved, Grace Free and Boundless, Pastor Steve Voigt of Covenant Lutheran Church of Milwaukee will speak on the theme, We're at War.
Grace and peace to all from God the Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. I wonder how many of you remember this country's war with Spain. Most people don't remember that for a short time from April to August of 1898, we were at war with Spain. This was the war with Teddy Roosevelt and the Rough Riders and their charge up San Juan Hill. Almost as if it had never happened, in four months, Spain had surrendered. Fact is, they weren't much of an opponent. By the late 1800s, Spain was several centuries past its prime. There's another war not many people realize is going on because the enemy is largely unseen. This war is more critical than any our nation has ever fought, and the casualties are much heavier. This time, the enemy is no pushover. Every ounce of energy, every weapon we can muster, every defense we can raise will not be enough. In this war, we need the full armor of God. You do know which war I'm talking about now, don't you? You do know the enemy. No, I'm not talking about the war against terrorism that still goes on today. No, we're at war against a different unseen enemy that is far more dangerous. We are at war with Satan. In our text, Paul writes to the Ephesians, Finally, my brothers, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's schemes. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. This is no collapsing Spanish empire we're fighting. We're at war with none other than the great evil empire and the ruler of darkness himself. Satan's goal in this war is to steer you away from God, to take your attention away from Jesus, your Savior, and to rob you of the peace and joy that's found only in Christ. Sadly, many people today, even many professing Christians, don't really believe we're at war at all. They don't really believe there's a devil. And this may be the devil's craftiest scheme. When someone doesn't believe in Satan, we forget we're at war. When that happens, we let our guard down. We become even more vulnerable to sin than we were before. We can begin to rationalize our favorite sins, whatever they may be, talking about others and spreading rumors before getting the facts, telling ourselves we have to have enough for ourselves before we can share our blessings with others, loving our cars a little too much, showing love for our children too little, Maybe even pretending sex outside of marriage is love. Now, the devil tempts us to think it's not so bad. Everyone else is doing it. No one will ever find out anyway. That's the way he worked with Adam and Eve in the garden, isn't it? Did God really say? When we forget our war with Satan, we can rationalize almost anything because we think we're hearing words of wisdom instead of whispers of the enemy. I've done it. I'll bet you've done it, too. That's why the words of our text this morning are so important. St. Paul won't let us forget we're in a war. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. And Satan is real. He's at war with us right now, and he's powerful. Yet when the last drop of blood has been shed, we'll be able to stand against him because God provides the armor we need. Paul says, therefore, put on the whole armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground and after you've done everything to stand. Believe it or not, the Spanish-American War was a war that America wanted. No less than Theodore Roosevelt, then serving as Assistant Secretary of the Navy, wrote in 1897, I should welcome any war. This country needs one. And the whole country got behind it. For that brief period, the energy of the whole nation was devoted to war. We're approaching the 17th anniversary of the terrorist attacks on 9-11. Think of what happened in this country in the days and weeks after that terrible day. People from all walks of life, people of different political parties, people across this nation from coast to coast said, we will stand together, united against evil and terrorism. People flocked to churches on the Sundays after 9-11. People were praying. People were aware of the enemy and prepared to do battle. It's the same in our battle with Satan. 
We need to understand that we are in a war and we need to be prepared for battle. God provides certain tools and weapons for this battle with Satan. And Paul says we should put on the whole armor of God. To Paul's way of thinking, there's no such thing as putting on half the armor of God. We need all the protection that God gives. Picture the armor in your minds. A Roman soldier preparing for battle first puts on the belt over his short tunic. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist. Every soldier in every age and in every kind of war needs to feel convinced that the cause for which he's fighting is just and true. Our cause is true. We stand against Satan and against the world because God has opened our eyes to see him as he truly is. And God reveals himself to us in his son, Jesus Christ. Through Jesus, we can know God's love and God's salvation. Because Satan has blinded the world, it may ridicule us, abuse us, and call us fools. But someday our cause will be vindicated. The next piece of armor is the breastplate. Paul says, with the breastplate of righteousness in place. And we know we can't stand before Satan in our own righteousness because our righteousness, our works, the best we can do is nothing but filthy rags. But God has covered us in the righteousness of Christ. Jesus did that for us on the cross, laying down his life for our sins and rising from the grave so that we can have protection against all the devil's assaults. The assurance that we are forgiven, holy, blameless in God's eyes because of Christ. As a result, we stand with our feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. In the midst of war comes that beautiful word, peace. Now that our sins are forgiven in Christ, we are at peace with God. We're in a holy alliance with our creator. And that means we never have to be afraid. Paul continues, in addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Satan will do everything he can to frighten us. He'll tempt us, threaten us, and someday even bring physical death. At every turn, he'll ask, can God really get you out of this one? And in faith, we say, yes, he always has and he always will. If God is for us, who can be against us? And then Paul says, take the helmet of salvation. Salvation has been won for us. In the ultimate battle of the cross and grave, Jesus defeated the devil and broke Satan's power. Satan fired all his arrows and exhausted all his weapons. He has nothing left. Christ has given us the victory by his death and resurrection. And that means someday he'll give us a crown to replace that helmet. And you can know without a doubt that Christ has accomplished your salvation and that one day you will be with him in heaven. By faith in Jesus Christ, trusting in him alone, you will receive an everlasting crown of life. So there we are, prepared for war, except that all our armor is useless without a sword, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of truth. You don't want to go into battle without your weapon. And when fighting the devil, God's holy word is the best weapon you can possibly have. Now, the Greek word translated as wrestle in our text can also be translated as struggle. And specifically, it's talking about hand-to-hand combat. And God's word is the best weapon for our daily struggle, our daily wrestling with the devil. Remember how Jesus withstood the devil's temptations in the wilderness? He said, it is written. He relied on the words and promises of God. Now, the word of God and its message of salvation in Christ Jesus is a powerful weapon. We can use it to attack, to change things, even to win over some of the enemies of God and bring them to our side. And we truly need every piece of this armor for our fight with Satan. But the thing that makes it so powerful, so invincible, is that it's the armor of Christ. And this concept of the armor of God did not originate with Paul. It's actually mentioned in the Old Testament in the book of Isaiah. God saw the hopeless condition of man. He knew that we couldn't save ourselves from sin and death, so he promised to send a savior. God says in Isaiah chapter 59, he saw that there was no one. He was appalled that there was no one to intercede. So his own arm worked salvation for him and his own righteousness sustained him. 
He put on righteousness as his breastplate and the helmet of salvation on his head. He put on the garments of vengeance and wrapped himself in zeal as a cloak. The Redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who repent of their sins, declares the Lord. God himself put on the armor and entered the fray. Paul is telling us that this armor of ours is battle-tested. It's been worn to victory. And the one who wore it before still fights for us. When we put on the armor of God, we're really wearing the armor of Christ himself. And if we are in Christ, we are invincible. By 1898, Spain was a shell of its former self. 300 years earlier, it had been the most powerful nation on earth. But the defeat of its armada by the British in 1588 forever changed that. By the time we picked a fight with Spain, it was a pushover. The enemy that declared war on the United States 17 years ago this month has certainly proved to be no pushover, largely because it's invisible. Satan once ruled the world, and even today, working in the shadows, always lurking, he's no pushover, but he is pushed over. Christ has knocked him flat. But we're still at war. Let's always remember that. But in Christ, we are prepared for battle and armed for victory. Amen. Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy holy spirit from me. Restore Let us pray for all people, bringing our petitions to the Lord who plants and grows his church so that we may take shelter in her shade. We pray for the growth and the life of the church, that God scatter lavishly the seed of his gospel, that his promises bear the fruit of faith in us, and that we walk not in the counsel of the wicked, but in the delight of the law of the Lord. We pray for all those who live in unbelief, that they may be led to repentance and faith in Jesus, to take refuge in the branches of Christ's church, to grow in the knowledge that the Savior died and was raised for them. We pray for our lives in Christ, that we walk by faith, not by sight, that we are constantly anticipating being at home with our Lord, and that we rejoice that Christ died for all, so that we who live might no longer live for ourselves, but for him who for our sake died and was raised. We pray for all the baptized, that like a tree planted by streams of water, each of us draws nourishment from our Savior, so that we grow in God's grace so that the love of Christ controls us and so that we regard no one according to the flesh. It is into your hands that we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and always grant you his peace. Amen. 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 As we celebrate 90 years of broadcasting the gospel of Jesus Christ, we'd love to send you a special free gift from our ministry to your home. 
As always, you can receive a copy of today's message. All you need to do is simply write to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. You may also call our Radio Church office at 414-462-9900. You've been listening to the Lutheran Radio Church service pre-recorded at Trinity Lutheran Church in Freistadt, Wisconsin. Today's music was provided by the Lutheran Radio Choir, directed by Trudy Schmaltz. The message, We're at War, was given by Reverend Steve Voigt of Covenant Lutheran Church of Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Your liturgist was Reverend Jeffrey Miller of Berea Lutheran Church in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. The Lutheran Radio Choir will now close the service with hymn 50, Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing. Lord, dismiss us with thy blessing. Fill our hearts with joy and peace. Let us each thy love possessing, triumph in redeeming grace. Oh, refresh us. The preceding service was brought to you by the Lutheran Radio Church Service, broadcasting radio church services every Sunday morning since 1928. You may request a copy of this morning's sermon. Please pray for this important ministry. Prayerfully consider donating any amount the Lord enables you to give to this Christ-centered gospel ministry. Please mail your gift to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. That's the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. Thank you for your generous support of the Lutheran Radio Church Service, and may God bless your day.